Alrighty guys, so today I will show you how to record your tracks for your choir using GarageBand. I will go ahead and open my GarageBand. So this normally pops up when you open it, so you can create an empty new project. You just click choose. Now my piece actually has a piano accompaniment, so I would just click on the piano right here, create. I'm gonna close this. And I would actually choose piano, Steinway grand piano, just for the sake of the sound. And then I start playing and I just click the record button. Now you will notice here that there's a lot of things that are marked. The one, two, three, four, that is the count in before you start singing. Metronome is the metronome that can be played for you all the time. This is a tempo marking that you can easily change by double clicking on it. So I can change it to let's say 88. You can also change the key that you are in by clicking on it. You can also change the time signature. Now, I actually created my file already and it looks like this. So I have piano accompaniment and a four part piece. So what I'm going to show you right now is how to add another part, how to record in GarageBand. It is very simple. So when I start creating a project, let's say I started with the piano because that in, it's the easiest for me to just listen to the piano and record. First, I will add an instrument by clicking this plus button. And I will click on the microphone and choose create. And now you see that a new audio track has been created. Now I will change this to voice and natural vocal. So it changed it automatically. And I'm going to also just quickly rename it. I'm going to pretend that this piece also has a tenor part. And I will just right click on it and I will rename it tenor. And then let's say the tenor starts singing in this part right here in the piece. So in order to find the the right part of your music, you just move the cursor. You see that my piece is actually written in D flat major. The tempo that I set is for is 90 beats per minute. So let's say tenors, I'm ready. They're highlighted right here and I start recording. For recording, I actually use Blue Yeti microphone. It's a really nice microphone for the price. And I always also use the headphones, so I don't have any audio feedback. So I press record. La 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 la. And let's say I'm all finished. And now the tenor is right here. Let's say I want to re-listen to it now. So I just move the cursor back to the beginning of the tenor and I press play to see how it all sounds together. Let's say I don't like it now and I'm like, you know what? I don't like just maybe this part from measure 33 here. So I just move the cursor to measure 33 and I re-record. So I just press the record button. La 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 la. And now I press stop. Let's say I recorded everything now and I like how it sounds and this is ready for my students for my singers to listen to so i will gonna export it very soon but before that i want to show you another really nice thing about recording in garageband and that is automation in order to for you to access the automation you can just press a on your keyboard and this happens or you can go to mix show automation the automation you will notice that i have these little tiny lines here. And what this does is it enhances or lowers the volume of certain parts that I recorded. So I use this sometimes for my young singers or let's say my singers didn't have enough time to practice really well. So it just helps them to hear their part more than other parts. So I can just move soprano one volume quite a bit high up, not too much. So it's not overpowering and too loud. And then I can move all the other parts lower, but I wanna make sure that my students still hear them. I don't wanna mute them, just so 
they really I use this for practice as well sometimes for their practice files just so they get used to listening the to the singers around them and so let's say okay I'm ready with this so I like this so now I'm just gonna press automation again and you will notice that this changes the little volume cursors here as well my project is now ready to be exported into an mp3 so I'm going to go and click share, export song to disk. And I'm going to name it Soprano one just because my Soprano one is predominant. If you want to, you can also just record all the parts at the same volume and leave it that way. And I'm going to find this on my desktop in a little folder that I created. So it's right here. So I'm going to use this MP3 later in iMovie to create a track and a video for my singers to watch while they are recording themselves.